Well, man, I mean, uh, look, you've been doing this for 14 Weird, years you got now. the first question. <laughs> <laughs> you've been doing this for 14 years now, but, man, sold out arena, a couple ranked guys up at the top of the division talking about title shots and stuff. I mean, still exciting as it was in the beginning, or is this yeah. just business? Dude, it's crazy I'm here. It's, it's so crazy to me when you look at the road and where I started, and, and I don't know. It's crazy, man. Um, be on a big event like this, two title fights, packed with superstars. Um, and still right there in title contention. We're, we're close, man, so I'm excited. You, know, you look at this run that you're on right now, three straight first-round finishes. I mean, especially after the setbacks. I mean, does this feel like kind of a, a resurgence, a renaissance, a, a new phase of your career? No, I'm just getting better. You know what I mean? It, I, when I think of resurgences, I think of, you know, when I when I had it and then lost it and tried to get it back. You know, I, I, I just think I'm getting better and, and I'm figuring out as I go. Always kind of been a late bloomer. You know what I mean? I just – you know, I've kind of grown up in this sport and man, I made a lot of mistakes, done a lot of stupid shit. Um, so I just, I just think I'm getting better and I'm just, you know, uh, I'm maturing, I'm figuring it out. You know, I'm dealing with, you know, loss and, and heartbreak and, you know, just figuring it out as I go. And sometimes I don't take enough breaks. I think that's some of it is I, is that sometimes I just keep fighting when I should probably take a step back, deal with my shit and then come back in and I just kind of fight through it all. Just had to get those first 50 under your belt. And then, yeah, uh, man, now we got 50 <laughs> out of the way. You know, I think we can probably start this career right now. Uh, Ankle Live, I mean, you know, obviously anybody at this point in the division is good, but you haven't seen quite as blown away with them as maybe everybody else is. Obviously, you're an analyst. I know you got to think as a fighter right now, but what is it you think that you see that maybe other people don't, that they, you know, are lauding this guy as a future champion? I mean, I, th I, I guess my question is, what are they seeing that I don't? Um, Listen, he is good. He is very, very good. I want to be very clear about that. I, I, I don't for a second discredit his skills and abilities. I just don't see anything super special. And you don't, get, you don't have to be super special to win fights at the highest level. Basics wins fights, and he's very, very basic. His, his approach is very simple. Um, he makes no mistakes. He's never out of position. Um, but he doesn't always necessarily do a lot to make a lot of mistakes. Um, a guy like that, you got to get him outside of his box. Um, the mistakes are going to be made when he's panicking, trying to get back in his box. Um, and I think that's what I do best. You know what I mean? I create chaos. I get people out of their comfort zone. I, I take them to places that they don't like to be. Um, and to be fair, I don't necessarily like being there, but that's where I'm the most successful. So there's, we got to do it anyways. Um, I, you know, I, I just think that he's, he's shutting people down. And I think that's really nerve wracking for a lot of the guys in the division. Um, and I just couldn't care less, you know. I, I, I'll go in there and I'm gonna do I'm gonna do my thing, and um, I can fairly confidently say we're gonna see Ankalaya in a way that we've never seen him before. Is there anything at all? I mean, you fought the absolute best. Well, I think when you look at quality of competition, I don't think there's a question. But is there anything that you see that he does that either reminds you of something that's incredibly dangerous or it's something that you haven't seen before? I mean, is there anything special or unique about this challenge? It, he's unique just in the the way his skill set is put together. Um, each thing individually isn't anything new or, or different. Um, it's really lead hand heavy. Um, I really wish I could see a video of him signing his posters because I would be absolutely shocked if he's actually left-handed because um, he's so lead side heavy. Uh, he funnels a lot of people to his left hand, but he doesn't necessarily throw it that much. Um, when he's got to check down and he gets uncomfortable, he does a really good job of staying on top. Um, he's not super active there. Uh, I think even less so since the Paul Craig thing just because I – I think he got a little bit outside of himself and got a little bit overconfident um, and got himself caught. Um, that said, I have a lot of respect for Paul Craig, so I hope if Paul sees this, he doesn't take this as disrespect. Um, for what everyone expects Uncle I have to do to me, it's very shocking that Paul Craig was still around in the third round to be able to do that. Um, and I don't mean that in a, in a negative way for Paul, but they're talking about him like he's the second coming of Jesus. And he's going to rip my head off my shoulders and feed it to the crowd. It, it, that's not a guy that should have a guy have Paul Craig hanging around for 15 minutes. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, he was in a kind of a lackluster. I don't know. It wasn't super exciting with Tiago Santos. Like he managed to make a guy like Tiago Santos boring. Um, takes a special individual to be able to do that. So um, I don't for a second discredit the things that he's able to do. Um, I'm also, I'm also not in the belief that Tiago Santos is the same guy we're used to seeing. So, I don't know, man. I, 
I, maybe I'll figure it out on Saturday night. We'll see. Um, I just, as of right now, I just don't see it. Are you like almost embracing the disrespect a little bit? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like you're kind of coming in with a chip on your shoulder and we always talk about like, Hey, it's important not to go in there emotional. It's important not to go. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. it seems like to you, you're kind of like embracing having a little chip on your shoulder and having people doubt you. Is that accurate? Yeah, a little bit. You know, it, I think if, if you don't really do your homework and really look into the details and the stats, it, you can miss a lot of things. Like, if you look at my record, my last 25 fights, I'm 20 and 5. Um, three of those five losses are to guys that have either held the title or fought for the title. The other two, the f one of them is Cesar fucking Fajaya. How long ago was that? Was that 2013? Something like that? Like, it's a long time ago. And the other one's Alexander Rakic. So, like, uh, you know, they look at his record and they see 16 and one and they look at mine and they see all the losses. A lot of those were early. A lot of those were, you know, I was young and I was taking fights that shouldn't have been taken. I wasn't trained in the right way or in the right places. I was, you know what I mean? I just shouldn't have been there. Um, so it's odd to me, you know, that people that are supposed to be analysts are supposed to, you know, they are supposed to know what they're talking about, kind of look over that kind of stuff. But I don't, I don't know, man. I, I think I've been through a lot lately. Um, you know, I lost my mom recently and, and, you know, the, the injuries and, and just all the surgeries and the staph infection and, uh, you know, I was kind of down there for a while, um, and kind of reverted back maybe to my old self a little bit, but now that I've pulled myself out of it, I'm managing my mental health better. I'm, I'm just trying to be a better person. I just don't give a shit about uncle life. You know what I mean? Like I'm worried about myself. Um, I'll deal with him when he's in front of me. Um, I just, I just think it's my time. I feel good. I think I'm coming into my prime. I physically, I'm stronger than I've ever been. I've really pushed my conditioning. This one, like, I don't think there's a guy at 205 that can beat me right now in a 15 minutes fight. In a 15 minute fight, I, if I can put my foot on the gas and go, like, I might be the best three round fighter in the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I might be. Well, they could put so, a belt in for that. Yeah, you start talking about five rounds, and we got to start managing that that conditioning a little bit. Um, but Right now, I just, I just, I'm just on. And it is, as you said, it's just five and four in the world. I mean, this is a huge fight. So, are you thinking? I know you can't look past that, but are you thinking like Rakic, Blahovic? I mean, do you, do you have a plan of where you go from here? Or is it just like let's just get through and see? So every time I fight, it's there's always an excuse, right? Shogun was old, and Gustafson at the time was a good win, but now it's you know now it was, he was on his downward spiral. Um, Ozdemir wasn't that good. It, it's always something. I'm I'm very excited to see what they're going to say on Sunday. He was never that good to begin with. Right. That's what it's going to be. So <laughs> I think this is the one, though. I think this is the one where, like, I think it's good enough for a title shot. I really do. Um, I don't want to continue to sound like I'm shitting on Jan Blahovich, but, like, he's coming off of a loss from the title and then not a fight that you can necessarily call a win. Is it a win? For sure. Did he beat him? I don't think you can really say that. Um, and then if Glover gets the rematch, I would have to yield because I have so much respect for Glover. You know, maybe there's an argument to be made somewhere there, but I'm not willing to, to kind of shit on Glover to make it. So, um, you know, I think that's the problem. If it's, if it's Glover that they want, then I'll have to sit down and shut up. Um, anything else I'll argue for a title shot. Respect. Last thing for me with all that in mind. Is just a win enough? I mean, to go out there, like you said, Ankle doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He's gone to some decisions. I mean, it's just a win enough. Or do you feel like you almost want to go out there and make some kind of statement to show the world, like, hey, I, I'm, I'm still here? I, I think a win is enough. Um, but I finished 33 out of 35 fights. So, it, it like, if I win, I think it's safe to say it would be a finish. Fascinating. Do you think all the hype behind this guy could simply be because – any Russian fighter that shows up and has a few good wins in the UFC gets this crazy hype like they're going to be the next Better you saying it than me. <laughs> well, there but, it is. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do think that. Um, and again, he has a very solid skill set. He, the dude is good. But there's only one Habib and there's, there's only one Islam. You know what I mean? Like the fact that those two dudes even know each other is fucking shocking. So like <laughs> that's just a – I think that's just a weird coincidence. But, you know, every I, – I, I do think that – there is some hype there because he is Russian and he looks very Russian uh, and he fights very Russian. So uh, I think there is, there is something there. And about the, you know, the argument for the title shot, I understand why you'd want to say, okay, Glover, go have it. But basically if he wins on Saturday, he'll probably get a title shot. Right. So if that's the case, then you should have that ticket as well. Right? But that's, that's kind of how I look at it. You know, I, 
it's almost a foregone conclusion that I'm in the rear view mirror and Magum at Uncle Life's fighting for the title. Um, I think that would only be fair to go the other way. Uh, Anthony over here. Uh, your former opponent, uh, Alexander Gustafson, suffered a, a finish in his lo uh, last loss. Uh, DC says that he should retire as a former foe yourself. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think he should take a step back in competition. Uh, if you look at his last four losses, Krylov doesn't get enough credit. That guy is real good. I mean, if you go back and you look at the Ankalaya fight, if he's as good as everyone says he is, Krylov took a round off that guy and, and made it hell for him to the point where he was getting takedowns and, and, and was not enjoying himself that much. You know what I mean? Like he had to kind of check down and, and play it safe and get a win. Um, so I, I have a lot of respect for, for Krylov. Um, I guess, and on another note, like Krylov made it real tough for Gustafson and then, you know, then Paul Craig goes and smokes him. So that's, you know what I mean? Like this division's so fucking weird. Um, but Krylov's tough. His other loss is to Verdum. You end up on the ground with Verdum in any of those positions. That's just how it's going to go. That dude's too good on the ground. Um, John Jones and me. So it, he's not losing to, to people that aren't formidable opponents. Like if he could, there's there's something to be said for momentum and and confidence and and you can tell by looking at Gus even in his movements in the first 5 seconds of that fight he has no confidence right now so we took a step down and maybe got himself into a a fight that was a a favorable matchup i don't want to say an easy fight cuz there's no easy fights here but it's one that's just maybe fits his style a little bit better where he can just go in and be free and play a little bit and and play safer um I think maybe he gets one or two of those. Maybe we can get the Gustafson of old back. Um, but I don't necessarily completely agree with DC of saying he's done, he's, his chin is gone. He, listen, I hit that dude real hard, and his chin is just fine. Kind of going off of that, what did you make of Paul Craig's performance uh, in this last fight? I like Paul Craig a lot. I really do. Um, I've had him on the podcast a couple times. He's, you know, me and Bisbing had him on. Um, he's a really, really funny guy. Um, I think he handicaps himself a little bit because I think we believe in his striking more than he does. Because uh, when he decided to to kind of say F it and, and really get into a striking exchange with Vulcan, he did just fine. And Vulcan is a lot trickier than he gets credit for. Like, that, that guy can, can, can fight on his feet just fine. So I think if he engaged in the striking a little bit better or a little more often and did it with some confidence, I think the takedowns would come easier. Because anytime he would, you know, he got really deep on some double legs and he just doesn't have that, you know, kind of American wrestling style where he can turn the corner or, or blast through it or drive through. I think if he added, if he just really, really focused on his wrestling with some high level, high level guys and really fixed that hole in his game and then grew some confidence in his striking, Paul Craig would be really hard to deal with. But right now, he's he's making himself one-dimensional, almost on purpose. Um, so on this current win streak you're on, you fought small cage, big cage, no crowd, with the crowd. Yeah. What, what, what's your ideal scenario? Is it, is it the big cage in, in front of the crowd or the small cage in front? Like, what would be your ideal you know, scenario? Um, I think the big cage in front of the crowd. The crowd's definitely got to be there. Um, the cage size, I'm kind of less concerned with. Cause I kind of like to fight in a phone booth anyways, but um, I, I also think that the big cage probably favors uncle life in this matchup because it gives them a lot more space and, and a little more real estate to continue to walk me down up against the fence. So it gives him a lot more space behind him. If that makes any sense. Um, it's the only reason I think he was able to stay safe in that Tiago Santos fight is Tiago needs a lot of room to get going. Uh, and the smaller cage kind of helped him there because he, you know, he bl got blitzed a couple times, and and I think he went down once, and um, that's obviously the safer spot for him with with a guy like Tiago. So, um, I think here it favors him though. But you know, I, the size I don't really care. I definitely need the crowd though. How much does the preparation change for you? Because you're coming off of a main event, you know, scheduled for five rounds. This one's obviously three. Does the preparation change at all for you? Not really. Not really. It's it's kind of all the same. Um, I always hear those those guys talk about, well, I got you know this training's different because it's five rounds, and I'm like, I don't get it. I don't know what else you're doing, like, because uh, I'm 
pushing myself to the limit every single time. I, I couldn't go any harder. You know what I mean? I don't leave anything left in the tank when I'm done with practice. So, um, it's kind of all the same. It really, the difference is, is managing your output in the fight, which is, you know, we've heard Shale talk about it a bunch about he thinks five rounds is crazy. And, and, and it's, it kind of is because it, it, like my heart and lungs are the same size as the 145 pounders. You know what I mean? So like, it just, it just doesn't make any sense. Like the math doesn't make sense. So I got to throw away a little bit of every round or I got to throw away the first or I got to take it easy in the second. Like no matter what, you're not getting a hundred percent of us a hundred percent of the time. We're just too big. We can't do it.